Hey guys, real quick, just wanted to tell you that this is actually the first episode of a member exclusive series, A Guide to Making Indie Games. Every week I'll upload a video showing off the project I'm working on, as well as walking you through how to make your own indie games. There's more detail later in the video, but if you want to see more, you can hit that join button down below, or on my channel. If not, that's totally cool too, enjoy the video, I appreciate you. Welcome members of the Apox Fox channel. First of all, thank you so much for joining and supporting my channel. You really don't know what it means to me. You might not know this, but my goal in life is to one day become a full-time developer, and you guys are the first to support that dream, so it really does mean a lot. So here's the plan for these devlog videos. The plan is to have a full start-to-finish guide on how to make your own solo-developed game. I'm going to share some advice that I learned that really helped me get started, and at the same time, you can take a look at my own dream game as it's built from scratch. From project planning and design documents to programming and art and music and sounds, advertising and publishing your work, every part of the process will be shown to you guys. I guarantee that if you follow along with this guide and work on your own games alongside these videos, we can make something pretty dang cool. It's also just an excuse for me to make a bigger game than I've ever made before, so if you aren't making your own games, that's totally cool too. You can get a behind the scenes look at my game. Some important stuff going in, I'm not a classically trained teacher. I'm not going into all the details about how to code. Besides, there are hundreds of free tutorials out there that will teach you the basics. What I do have to offer though is experience. I've been making games for over two years now, I've finished a bunch of projects, and I've learned a lot about the smaller details that goes into making games. So maybe I won't teach you how to code in the literal sense, but I can teach you how to be better at it. Some of you may know that I make pixel art for my games. These devlogs will be a look into my process when it comes to making character designs, tile sets, enemies, animations, and so much more. I also make my own original music for games, and I'll be showing you how to start writing video game music and sound effects. But enough blabbering, today's devlog will cover a very important part of indie game development, the all-knowing and all-confusing design document. It's time to figure out what game we're making. If you're making your own game, feel free to follow along. So design document is a lot more of a loose term than you might think. Some people praise it to be the keystone of any great game. Personally, I think it's just a good way to get some ideas out there. But if we're planning on making a game, it's important to keep all of your ideas in one place. That way you can go back and reference them later. Design documents are loose because you can kind of make them on anything you want. A classic notebook, a Google Doc. I personally use a website called Milanote, which is a great way to organize your projects, but you can really use whatever you want. Every great game starts with an idea. It could be a mechanic like a platformer where the player controls the gravity, or a shooter where you have to protect a robot robbing a bank. I won't lie to you, ideas are surprisingly one of the most challenging parts about game development. Well, ideas are easy, obviously, but good ones are hard to come by. There is a cheat code to come up with ideas, though, that completely change the way I make games. I read a great book by Austin Kleon called Steal Like an Artist. The thesis was basically that there's no such thing as original ideas. Everything is stolen from somewhere else. So in order to find inspiration for your games, look to the games that inspire you. I make the first section of my design document into kind of a mood board filled with stuff I want to steal from. Sounds bad when you say it that way, but honestly, that's where most of the original ideas are are going to come from, so just bear with me. Take screenshots and mechanics and art styles and music from all different kinds of places. For me, I know I want to make a platformer that feels challenging like Celeste. I want a focus on speedrunning like Neon Whites. I want stakes and storytelling like Danganronpa. Throw all of these inspirations into one place, and eventually you can get a clearer picture of what kind of game you're going to make. Now that you've got that fiery motivation to make something, it's time to scale the project down. Like, way down. Us game devs tend to get a little too carried away sometimes and forget that we do in fact actually have to make the game. You have to be reasonable, it's just us, remember? We're not some triple A studio with a giant budget. So instead of making this massive speedrunning metroidvania I had in my head, I'm going to make a simple platformer where you have to speedrun each level. I think my idea is still pretty ambitious for a beginner, but a lot of solo development is understanding what you're capable of. For me, I've had experience making a platformer before, and I also have these tutorials to keep me motivated, so I know I can handle it. Figure out what you're capable of, scale it down a bit more, and you should be golden. 
Here's a few things you need to put on paper. How long will this project take? A month? Six months? Two years? It's important to plan this out beforehand. Having a loose finish line is key to actually getting work done. For me, I think this game will take me about a year to complete. Once you have that, double it. This might sound discouraging, but a lot of us don't consider how much time you need to dedicate to actually testing and polishing your game. This can take almost as long as making the game itself, so you have to be willing to do twice the amount of work you sign up for. I'll tell you a little story. A year ago, I made my first solo developed game called Flipknot. It was a pretty simple idea about an alien who needs to find his way home. I planned to work on this game for a month originally, but it actually ended up taking me about two months to complete. Even then, there were still tons of bugs and glitches and unpolished areas in the design that I should have taken even more time fixing. All this to say, plan wisely. If you want to spend a month on a game, plan your project for two weeks. Now back to the fun stuff. Now that you have a very broad idea of what your game will be, it's time to refine the details. What are the most important features of your game? For me, I already know that it's a speedrunning platformer, so the most obvious features are movement mechanics and a satisfying jump. I'll also need a timer that starts at the beginning of a level and a finish line with a leaderboard. This might seem like a no-brainer, but writing out small details like this will give you a good place to start in knowing what to work on next. I also wrote some broader ideas like a level select menu and a hub area for the player to hang out in between the levels. I won't reveal all my secrets now because I do have a bit of a storyline in mind that could work well for this game, but setting up the bare minimum requirements to get the game moving is most important. You might start to realize that you bit off a little more than you can chew while building the prototype and that's totally okay. Figuring this stuff out during the process will happen naturally, so don't overthink it too much. Just find something to latch onto and see if it works. Other game devs might not agree with this, that's totally fine, but I think this is a good point to close the design document and start actually making the game. We got some good ideas, let's see if they work. So I started this project as I start any project with a character controller. You'll notice that I already have an art sprite for my character, the reason for this is that I've actually been planning this game for a very long time. I'd recommend not focusing on art just yet though, especially if you haven't even started your game. When you start adding more content like art and sounds to your game, things can get chaotic very fast. Ideally, the first prototype project should feel messy and ugly, but not stressful. Plans change, mechanics and ideas change. Don't put unnecessary work into something that you aren't 100% about yet. That being said, I'm going to start with the sprite because I think she's cute. So now that I I have the basic controls down, it's time to start working on building a level. Luckily for platformers, this is very easy. Just grab a bunch of different sized squares, place them around and test them, rinse and repeat. Once you have a level, throw in a start and finish line, add a timer, and boom, we have ourselves a game. It might not look like much, but this is the start of what will become a very big project. Right now it's still boring though, so back in the design document, I did some more brainstorming. What interesting mechanics can I steal and make my own? Well, I originally added crosscode for its unique dialogue system, but another feature I love in the game is the VRPs. These didn't quite match my original plan I had in mind, but but this is actually an important lesson. Just because you think something won't work doesn't mean you shouldn't at least try it. It could be a fun mechanic, and we can always go back and change things later. Remember, this is the time to throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. Don't put too much pressure on yourself to make a great game right away. Let the game become fun by itself. So implementing these projectiles should be pretty simple. You aim with the mouse and fire by clicking. I decided to set up a level requirement where you need to pop three balloons in order to successfully finish the level. It's simple for now, but but there's a lot of potential here. The balls could bounce off walls in order to hit switches or hard to reach enemies. Maybe charging the projectile adds knockback so you can use it to boost yourself to high ledges. Just by mixing a few ideas from other games, we've started to come up with something pretty original. And now we have the basis for what our game will be built on. This might change later, but for now, I think it's a great starting place to get us moving in the right direction. Here's some homework for those of you who are building your own games. Start building your most simple ideas 
ideas and fine-tune them until they feel fun. This can mean something different for all sorts of games, but if you get something that works and feels fun to play, you're on your way to greatness. My plan for next week is to finish up the basic prototype and start adding some fun speedrunning level ideas. If you have any ideas, feel free to leave them down below. I'll be going over them in the next devlog. Thank you again so much for becoming a member. I really appreciate it. Keep on gaming to the fullest, and I will see you very soon. Peace!